Hello and welcome back to AINet. In today's video we're diving into some of the most intriguing developments shaping the future of AI. From OpenAI's secret project Jawbone to NVIDIA's revolutionary Jet Orin, Google DeepMind's VO2 and some profound thoughts from Mo Galdat on artificial intelligence. We've got a lot to cover, let's jump right in. So first of all we got OpenAI's secret project Jawbone. This comes from a leak confirming OpenAI's first form of agents. In this picture you can see that it states tasks. This feature allows you to make ChatGPT do things in the future. This picture states some of the examples like practice French with me daily or like send me a daily horoscope. This feature has a lot of potential and could be built on tremendously by OpenAI. Just think about the possibilities this feature might have once it is allowed to take on tasks for you on the internet. But the current version only allows you to activate prompts on a schedule or on a future date like the video shows. They are also implementing notifications to keep you notified once it's completed its prompt. How do you guys feel about this? Is it the first step to agents we have been waiting for? Next up is Nvidia, a name synonymous with AI innovation. They've recently introduced Jetson Orin a platform designed to bring AI to the edge, literally. It's a game changer for robotics, autonomous vehicles and even smart cities, with over 200 trillion operations per second packed in a compact module. This technology will make AI more accessible and more powerful than ever. Imagine drones navigating complex terrains or robots performing tasks with near human precision. The possibilities are endless. Here's a video with the introduction of Jetson Orin. Hi, welcome to my house. I'm living in a different house now. Uh, we're fixing the house that you guys saw the last time you were in my kitchen. And let's see, what were we doing? My hair was a lot longer and I lifted a brand new HGX out of my oven while I'm cooking something up for you again today. And let me show it to you. Okay, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, our brand new AI computer. Look at this. I think I might have cooked it a little bit too long. It shrunk. The little tiny Jetson Nano. Little Orin computer. This thing that's really amazing is that um, a long time ago, starting with Xavier, you guys might have known, that we created a brand new type of processor. It was a robotics processor. Nobody understood what we were building at the time. And we imagined that someday, these deep learning models would evolve and we would have, you know, robots of all kinds. Everything that moves would be robotic. And, and now here we are, uh, we're seeing all kinds of amazing robots, robots on wheels, robots on legs, two legs, three legs. And uh, of course, general humanoid robotics are nearly upon us. This is a brand new Jetson Nano Super. Almost 70 trillion operations per second, 25 watts and $249. It runs everything that the HGX does, uh, even runs large language models, and uh, can't wait for all of you to try it. It's available everywhere. Go get it. Enjoy robotics. And it runs CUDA and CUDNN and TensorRT. You could create an agentic AI that reasons and plans, so you could use it for a robot, you could use it for a workstation. It's an incredible computer. What do you guys think? So as we can see, Jetson Orin is really fascinating and quite compact. I'm excited to see how it impacts the future. Now let's talk about Google DeepMind's latest achievement, VO2. It's a new video tool with amazing visuals. As we can see, VO2 is quite fascinating. Unfortunately, it's not out for the public use yet. However, the people able to test this new model have given feedback that VO2 is spot on with its prompt adherence. Is this a competitor for OpenAI Sora? Or is Sora not even considered a competitor to VO2? We will see once it is released. Finally, let's explore the insights of Mo Galdat, the former chief business officer at Google. In a recent talk, he has shared profound thoughts on the exponential growth of AI and its potential impact on humanity. He emphasizes the importance of ethics and responsibility as we develop these tools. 
Godot's perspective is a wake-up call to balance innovation with humans' best interests. His message resonates deeply. We are at a critical juncture where our choices today will shape tomorrow. So far until today, technology has always meant progress. More and more and more and more. Easier and easier, faster and faster, if you want. So my original prediction was 2029. My current prediction is 2026, which basically is the point at which technology is so advanced that the rules of the game change. And most people don't recognize that. And we're getting to a point, I think, that's being more and more confirmed today with ChatGPT and the likes, that machines are going to be more intelligent than us. And machines are also going to be more autonomous than us. And they're going to be more connected than us. And most interestingly, they're going to be more responsible than us. So, so many of the decisions related to information in the world today are not handed over to humans anymore. Everything that you see on Instagram is not dedicated by someone, it's dedicated by a machine. Everything that you see, you know, when you search Google is dedicated by a machine, right? You have to realize that as those autonomous beings, if you want, become more intelligent than us, which as I say, most predictions were pointing to 2029. When that happens, we hit a singularity. And a singularity is a very interesting place to be. If anyone tells you, I know what's going to happen beyond 2026, I think they're either very arrogant or uninformed. We don't know. A singularity could lead in one of two ways. One way is it could be a dystopian world where the machines completely disturb our understanding of the world. A lot of people, don't, again, don't acknowledge that while we don't really have robots walking the, the, the streets yet, the machines' foothold on knowledge and information is so large that they could completely disrupt your view of life. Or we will end up in a utopia. And the difference between the two is so subtle, rarely ever discussed in computer science, rarely ever discussed, discussed by the regulators. And, and the difference between the two is very straightforward. Those machines are learning their intelligence from mimicking us. They are basically us on steroids. When an Instagram recommendation engine tells you what to see, it's not making up the content yet. It's simply saying, from the way you browse, from the content that's been posted recently, from the way others browse, I sort of think you're going to like this. If you change the way you browse slightly, or if content providers stop shaking their hips and start to talk about physics, and if physics become more popular on Instagram, somehow more of us will see physics. What will end up happening is that, in my personal view, within a few years' time, there is a moment of truth. And that moment of truth is, have we reflected to the machines that what we want is actually for humans to be happy? If we manage to do that, the machines will just provide you happiness on steroids. It will simply stop showing you uh, things that make you feel less or, you know, egocentric influencers that make you think that you're worthless or not enough and so on. And it will start to show you more of Ohaso kind of content that basically tells you, hey, you're okay, there is a path to happiness and it's very predictable. And, and I think that choice is, as I said, a singularity. We don't know which way we will go. For now, it's likely that we're going to magnify more of humanity's challenges, if you want, downfalls. But it's in, in my perception, when something is more intelligent than us, it will probably match the intelligence of life itself. And, and life itself is a lot more pro-happiness, pro-life, pro all of us rather than each of us against each other. And my perception, I call that the force inevitable in the book. My perception is that we will end up in that place. Eventually, we'll end up in a place where the machines will tell us, hey, little kids, don't be naughty. This is the way to do it. You know, love each other, do it right, and focus on what makes your life better. Eventually. Between now and then, how will it go? Humans' challenges are the result of limited intelligence. We're, we're so smart to create a machine that takes us from here to Australia to surf. And we're so stupid that this machine burns the planet in the process. That's not how the AI is going to work at all. AI will simply say, you can either not go to Australia if you're destroying the planet, and I'll give you a virtual reality headset that does that for you. Or we're going to invent a machine that takes you to Australia, but 
doesn't really burn the planet in the process. The reason why we're unable to do this is not because we're very smart. The challenges of global uh, you know, climate change and uh, geopolitical issues and economic issues is not because of our intelligence. It's because of our limited intelligence. Give us more intelligence, hand that over to machines that are impartial and uninterested in, in scarcity like humans are, and we'll all be in a good place. Just like the smartest of all of us are so worried about the species being extinct from the planet, machines that are smarter than us will not want humanity to be extinct from the planet. It's not the way abundance works. I think the answer to all of the technology coming up is optimism. All of the dystopian stories, we might get glimpses of those in the past. But I think the eventual reality is if machines are smart enough, they'll create out of abundance. The force inevitable is we will end up in a utopia. It's just a utopia that is very different than the world we know today. Different economic models, different compensation models, different tax models, different every model. And it's a utopia that has to cross a chasm that might actually be dystopian. And that's really where, where we need to make up our mind. Do we teach the machines the right values now and so they, we don't have to suffer during their teenage years, if you want. Or do we not? And then we struggle with their teens, but when they're adults, they'll come back and take care of us. So there you have it. From OpenAI's secretive Jawbone to NVIDIA's Jetson Orin, Google DeepMind's VO2 and Mogadot's eye-opening perspective. The AI world continues to evolve at lightning speed. What do you think about these developments? And remember, Curiosity cures the cat. Stay curious and stay informed. See you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you liked the video. Have you subscribed already? I'm waiting. Thank you for subscribing.